Hello, I'm Dwayne. And I'm Lance, and we'd like to welcome you to another episode of TKS, A True Knowledge of Self, where we get to know ourselves from a biblical perspective. In our previous episode, we started uh, dealing with the subject of cultural expressions. And we want to talk much more about this because there's some important points and principles we want to bring out from God's Word. Now, expression is kind of the hallmark of hip-hop culture and, and, and popular culture. Many cultures uh, are, are, you know, pride themselves on their freedom to express themselves. And we, uh, and the Bible for that matter, is not against, God is not against cultural expression. God values culture. In fact, God created culture. But we know and we discussed that as culture drifted away from God via the practice and indulgence in sin, then culture, man's culture became degraded as well. And so in our efforts to minister to those of various cultures and in, in an effort to um, meet people where they are, as Christ did, and to uh, minister to the needs of society, we, we respect culture as well. And in fact, we read in 1 Corinthians 9 that Paul himself uh, through the inspiration of the Holy Spirit in an effort to uh, more effectively reach people, he became a Roman to the Romans. He became a Jew to the Jews so that he might win uh, individuals to Christ. And so what that is saying is that we are to make every effort possible within the realm of truth to meet people where they are, to minister to their needs, to win their confidence, to have show sympathy for them in, in measurable acts, to, in order to direct them to a better way. And understand that people need time for growth and that this process of, of coming to the Lord as a relationship, it's not something that just instantaneously happens. It's not about simple, uh, you know, blind uh, um, obedience or a, an idea where God is interested in robotic, compulsory, um, religious practice. It is a desire for God to love man and for man to love God. And that, that is a reciprocal relationship. So all these things taken into consideration, we talked about uh, what is expected, and, and, but we also discussed the limitation. So the limitation to this idea of respecting of culture and meeting people where they are is that whenever I engage in an effort to reach people, I never am obliged biblically to compromise the truth. So we use several examples and we're going to continue to go down this line because although God desires me to respect culture, wherever that culture deviates from the truth, that is what God is not going to accept. And that's what we uh, uh, as human beings cannot accept either. So this idea of cultural expression, mm -hmm. God is not against expression. No. God is not against culture. God is not against the fact that there's different languages and different, you know, foods and different things like that. But however, at the same time, God does say this is appropriate language. This is not. God does say this is food that I made for human beings to eat. This is not. So there are there are limitations. Oh, yeah. Absolutely. Um, and so expression is great. But what kind of expression is the question? So uh, God never, ever wanted us to express everything that comes to our mind. Isn't that correct? That's correct. And there's a reason why. Because you're going to find that if we study the Bible carefully, God first and foremost wanted us to guard our minds. In uh, the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, as an example, the Bible actually told us something really important about the mind. And there's a lot that the Bible says about the mind. I did a study on it one time, and I was amazed at what I found. And the Bible says in the book of 1 Peter chapter 1, and it's right there in verse 13, that it says, wherefore, gird up the loins of your mind, be sober and hope to the end for the grace that is to be brought unto you at the revelation of Jesus Christ. The Bible encourages us to be in a sober state of mind, yes. a mind that is not inebriated, if you will, a mind that is clear and able to focus. Now, there was a reason for that. The reason is that Something happens whenever we allow things to come into our minds. And it says this in the book of Proverbs, the 23rd chapter. Why is God so concerned? And I mean, really, you can go from verse to verse. The Bible talks about in uh, Romans chapter 12, verses 1 and 2, where it talks about the transforming of the mind. Be ye not conformed to the world, but be ye transformed by the renewing of your mind, etc. So God is really, really focused on the mind, and the reason is very simple. Two points that I'm going to show. The first one is in Proverbs 23. In Proverbs 23, right there in verse uh, 7, 
Here's what the Bible says. And this is one reason why God definitely wants us to be careful what we even let in our minds, let alone express from our minds. The Bible says in uh, Proverbs 23, verse 7, for as he thinketh in his heart, so is he. Now, we don't use this uh, organ in the center of our chest that beats and pumps out blood to think, but we do use this organ in our head called the brain. And when the Bible was talking about, uh, you know, guarding the heart or whatsoever a man thinketh in his heart, it's actually referring to the mind and yeah. not to the you know, organ in the center of our chest. So God was saying, whatsoever goes on in your mind is going to come out in your character. It is for this reason that we are to guard what we allow in our minds. Yes. And then we are to guard what we are to express from our minds. And how do we know that? Well, let's consider this. And I thought this text was really powerful. It's uh, Proverbs, the 13th chapter. Mm -hmm. In Proverbs chapter 13, this is what the Bible says. And this is why we cannot think that just because something goes on in the mind means that we are in full-blown liberty to share it. And I'm going to balance this out in just a minute, but watch this. In Proverbs 13, it says in verse 3, and this is actually a quote from the Good News Translation, which I thought brought the thought out more forcefully. It says, be careful what you say and protect your life. A careless talker destroys himself. Hmm. So when an individual can become careless, when they can get to the point where they say, I don't care, I'm going to just say what's on my mind. I mean, I grew up in a household. <laughs> you know, we, you know, and being a black man, this is often, this has often been labeled, you know, the black attitude, you yeah. know, and especially towards our sisters, the black women, you know, they just speak their minds. I say what I want to say. Nobody's the boss of me. And, you know, all of these different terms. And people just believe I can just, just because I'm thinking it, means go ahead and express it or feel it or feel it and then go ahead and just experiment it. But the Bible teaches something that the natural heart does not like. It's called restraint. Mm. It's a word that to a lot, you know, it's, it's a shame because even when you look at hip hop culture, you know, a lot of what hip hop culture, the way it was birthed was through oppression. It was through subjection and through uh, powers that be that were trying to hold brothers down you know they can't hold me down you know there's lots of songs that used to come out in that nature you can't hold me down I'm, I'm gonna get up I'm gonna rise above and I'm gonna do what I gotta do but here it is that God himself he endorses not like how man applies it but God nevertheless he does endorse the idea of restraint God believes just because you feel something does not mean you should do it just because you're thinking something does not mean you should express it. And just because you're thinking something does not mean you should keep thinking it. Yeah. As an example, if we were to look at what the Bible says as we consider 2 Corinthians chapter 10, this is a powerful point because I think a lot of times the deception is that, you know, I can do what I want, when I want, how I want, because I am who I am, or even another thought of a video clip that I think we should play that's going to actually bring some points out in just a second. In 2 Corinthians chapter 10, the Bible says in verse 3, For though we walk in the flesh, we do not war after the flesh, for the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. Now watch this. Casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God and bringing into captivity every what? Thought. Thought to the obedience of Christ. So notice that God actually believes in restraint, not with just what you say, not with just what you do, but even with what you think. Not every thought that comes in your head should be entertained. Yep. Some of these things need to be brought under the subjection of Christ. And we need to ask God, Lord, take away these thoughts because this has nothing to do with your character, your righteousness, or for the betterment of my future. So it is when it comes to uh, the words that we speak, as it stated, you know, be careful what you say and protect your life. A careless talker destroys himself. Another one in Ecclesiastes 5 and verse 2, it says, Be not rash with thy mouth, and let not thine heart be hasty to utter anything before God. For God is in heaven, and thou upon earth. Therefore, let thy words be few. Mm -hmm. God teaches this principle of restraint. Just because you're thinking it, just because you're feeling it, does not mean you have to express it. We have thoughts, words, and feelings that all need to sometimes be restrained, mm -hmm. held back because it would not produce good fruit. 
Unfortunately, you see a lot of these things happen today. It's kind of like an individual uh, that gets tired of, of, of things happening in our world. And it's okay to be tired of oppression. As an example, I'm going to speak to present issues right now. Yeah. You know, what, I'm, I'm a father of four children, two boys, two girls. My oldest son is 16, and then my other son is 14. They are young black men. And we live in America, and we have to pay attention to things that are happening in our society today. Right now, there's a challenge going on when it comes to young black men and sometimes uh, police officers and things of this nature. So I had to begin to instruct my son to say, son, listen, you know, if, if, if a police officer comes to you and they ask you to do something or tell you to do something, here are the ways you should respond. I have to train my child in this manner yep. because the reality is, is that even though he has a wonderful personality, even though as far as I'm concerned, he's a great person, he can be judged strictly based on his complexion. Mm -hmm. It's an unfortunate reality. It is sinful, but nevertheless, it's real. Mm -hmm. Well, when I think about that, I have to let my son know, son, if somebody spoke to you in a rude manner, and let's say it's even a police officer or what have you, you may feel who do you think you are? Where do you get off talking to me like this? Excuse me, I deserve respect. And you can go down that list. Yeah. But the reality is, is that we have a major trail of what has happened to many individuals of African-American descent that have had responses like this, unfortunately, to police officers, and some of them have even lost their lives as a result of it. Yeah. So I told my son, son, it's not that we will not fight against injustice. We will not deal with things that are evil. But you got to learn how to pick and choose when to fight. And when you're right there on the street, that's not the best time to do it right there because sometimes it's just what you say and what the cop says. And if you're dead, you have no say. Yeah. So I want you to practice wisdom that even if you felt like you are being unjustly treated, it's not that it won't be dealt with, but you got to learn something called restraint. Yeah. You got to learn how to say, listen, I know what I'm feeling right now, but at the same time, I have to understand this is not the time for me to address this issue, I'm going to do it at a better time that's more advantageous to me to get the goal, which is to get justice. So the Bible is bringing out principle after principle that simply lets us know just because you feel it, just because you think it or what have you, it doesn't mean that you should express it. Now, the problem that I'm seeing sometimes in hip hop culture is that a lot of our young people are being referred to as gods. Yep. And you know what the Bible lets us know, God can do what he wants because he is sovereign. But the problem is, is that if I teach individuals that you are gods, then I am basically trying to say to a degree that you are sovereign and you can do what you want and exercise what you want and express what you want, which the Bible does not teach. And as a result of that, we can find ourselves again through the influence of hip hop culture coming in contrast with God and his word. And we put ourselves on Satan's ground. This is the unfortunate psychology that is being purported throughout hip hop culture by some of its thought leaders. And I know we have a video clip where we're going to go ahead and kind of show an example of one of the key thought leader, leaders with uh, the gospel of hip hop, the temple of hip hop. And of course, this idea of what we're talking about an expression, which is none other than uh, KRS-One and a video where he made some statements along these lines. So I think we should take a look at this and then let's go ahead and let's share some comments on it as we come back while we're dealing with the subject of expression. All right. All right. So let's take a look. Hip hop is the new Vatican right now. This is why we started the temple of hip hop, because there is knowledge that urban people need, spiritual knowledge that's still in the world, but urban people need it. Urban people need to know that God is not a man in the sky. They'll say that, oh, we know God is not a man in the sky. We're, but you don't really believe that. You really don't believe that God is in your heart because if you did, you wouldn't be looking at the next man the way you're looking at him. We don't really have a robust spirituality. And I think it really needs to come back. You know, spirituality hasn't gone anywhere. It hasn't gone anywhere. People have just allowed themselves to be labeled by corporations. Don't let the label label you. And this is, this is the truth. People say, I'm a Christian. That's a label. Now you allow, I'm a Christian. What is that really? What is that? What do you mean when you say that? I'm a Jew, I'm a Muslim. Muslim, what does that mean to you? What is that? Is it just a label? Even the clothing you put on, is that just a label? Only hip hop has the authority even 
to announce to the world a new spiritual thought. Only hip hop has this authority. And the reason being is because all of the religions have blood on their hand. All of them. No disrespect to nobody. We're just talking. So, I mean, these are some pretty powerful expressions. And uh, what, are some, what are your thoughts on it? What, what, what kind of feedback would you give? I mean, several things. And we're not going to spend too much time in nitpick here. But the bottom line is this: we see this emphasis over and over. We could literally put video clip after video clip after video clip that shows this, this fundamental principle there that's kind of flowing underneath and in, in all throughout hip-hop culture. The idea that God is not up in the sky. You know, we used to, I remember in 5% Nation, that's called the spook religion, right? Mm -hmm. The idea that God is somewhere and all, that God is not up in the sky, but he's in our hearts. Uh, now it's true. God desires to dwell in that's every right. mind. Mm -hmm. But the Bible also says that God is there upon his throne. And it says that there is a process. I, I'm, I can't just in, uh, anoint myself to be God. And that's the problem. So once I, I consider myself to be God and there is no God up in the sky, God is in me. And that's the truth that all the world needs and all the urban youth need. And that's the truth that only hip hop and the temple of hip hop can give us. That's where things get very problematic. Mm -hmm. Expression, yes. Does it sound intelligent for a few minutes? But at a certain point, you begin to uh, be forced to accept one or two ideas. Mm -hmm. Number one, is there a creator? Are we going to follow the biblical, you know, prescription? And is this reality? Or are what individuals, every and any individual human being or whatever culture can just say, this is a new reality. Mm -hmm. And then go, go to the extent that saying that hip hop culture is the only culture, the only entity that can inform and give instruction and, get in, and present new spiritual thought. Mm -hmm. It becomes very problematic when we talk about expression. And, and the question that I have is, are, is there a principle, is there something in the Bible that informs me, that gives me instruction on number one, how I am to consume other people's expression you know, what, what, what am I uh, authorized to consume? What do I need to consider when consuming other people's expression? Mm -hmm. And then the same guideline that can be used to dictate to me how I can express. What are the guidelines? What are the parameters for my expression as well? Mm -hmm. Well, there are guidelines that I believe will definitely help us as it relates to this. Uh, as an example, if you were to look at Philippians chapter 4, in Philippians 4, in verse 8, it gives a beautiful outline of the kind of things that our minds should think on. And then if these are the things that are in our thoughts, these are things God is most certainly okay with us expressing. Yes. And here's an example. It says in Philippians 4 and verse 8, Finally, brethren, whatsoever things are true, whatsoever things are honest, whatsoever things are just, whatsoever things are pure, Whatsoever things are lovely, whatsoever things are of good report, if there be any virtue and if there be any praise, think on these things. Hmm. Now, why does God say think on these things? Because he knows if you think about things that are true, honest, just, pure, lovely, good report, virtuous, this is what's going to come out in your character. Yes. This is what God wants because this goes back to the original plan, which is to clothe man with that robe of righteousness. These are the virtues that are directly connected to righteousness, being truthful and honest and etc. It is a lie to tell a man, if God is not in the sky and is in your heart, then are you saying you're God? And if you are saying you're God, are you saying, are you your own creator? Did you make yourself? And then the next question is, well, then what is the authority over you that tells you right from wrong? Mm -hmm. This is the consistent problem. And quite honestly, it, it almost sounds borderline to atheism and other things because the atheist says there is no God in the sky either. It's just that they don't believe that God is in their heart. They just believe, hey, I'm the God of my life. I'm mm -hmm. the one that says what I want, when right. I want, how I want, and I do what I want. So, you know, there's not really a, a major difference between some of these principles that are being shared through hip hop culture in comparison to some, some of the things at least that you see happening right there in the lifestyle of the atheist. A denial of the creator, someone that is uh, in the sky, if you will, that is outside of ourselves, that did make us and had a perfect will for us, 
but more so I'm the architect of my future. I'm the one that can express what I want, when I want, how I want, and to do what I want. This is where we run into problems. The, you quoted a book called Ministry of Healing uh, in one of our episodes, and, and there's a statement in that book that I thought was very profound along these lines. Mm -hmm. It's in Ministry of Healing 251, and it stated, it is a law of nature that our thoughts and feelings are encouraged and strengthened as we give them utterance. It's the more that I keep saying something and uttering something as I speak, then it's going to you know, become part of my thoughts and it's going to be part of my uh, thinking and ultimately it's going to affect even my character. And as a result of that, God wants us to be mindful of what we express. Again, words, what goes on in our minds, and of course, what we do in our actions. A man may walk down an area and see a woman. I remember a hip hop group by the name of Naughty by Nature. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I had a chance to work with them, you know, well back in the days, you know, 91, 92. And I remember that talking with them off stage, I found that, you know, Tretch and Vinny and these guys, they, they were nice guys. I mean, I, I actually liked them. I, mm -hmm. You know, there was a lot about their characters that I liked. And I think there's a lot of really likable people that are in hip hop all, all together. But there was a song that made them explosive. But the song, when, I, when you look back at it, you have to be honest and say, man, this is really one of the most devastating effects that took place on society. And this is the constant contradiction that you see in hip hop culture right. through the license of expression. Again, going back to uh, Russell Simmons when he was talking with Don Lemon and look, I'm, I'm not going to tell anybody how to express themselves. Every poet has their right and so on, but they're doing it in the name of hip hop. And it is having an adverse effect that we have to be honest about. The song that they wrote uh, so many years ago was called OPP, <clears throat> Other People's Property. Mm -hmm. And he was asking everybody, you down with OPP, Other People's Property. Yeah. And what did that mean? That was talking about if you see a man's wife and you want her, go get her. Yeah. You see a woman's husband, you want him, go get him. Yeah. Now, what kind of message is that? I mean, it's almost pathetic to think that a message like that would be connected to a culture called hip hop that's supposed to be about love, unity, peace, and safely having fun. Right. Now, again, like you stated earlier, maybe, they, I'm sure in fact, that there are thought leaders in hip hop culture that says, no, we don't agree with OPP. We yep. think that that was a bad song. Yep. We don't endorse it. You know, And, and I, while I thank God for that position, the problem is, is that they're not really offering something better. Yes. What's not being stated in hip hop culture is do not fornicate. Wait until you get married and you are to be with only one person, which is God's design. And it is to be one man and one woman. And, you know, these are the things that are not forcefully coming out. Yeah, so, and, that, and that's the key. Yeah. It's not like it's, there's nobody on the planet saying that. We don't, we don't know every single person in hip hop or that represents hip hop. Right. But the, it's not the consistent message. Right. It's not the consistent message coming out. Yeah, so there's a, there's a constant, constant, constant confusion. And this is why everything, again, must be tested by Scripture. It's a hard position for one who does not live like this and does not do this. But when we're looking at cultural expressions, it's not that an individual can't express themselves. And by the way, you can. You can express whatever you want. Yeah. You can do whatever you want. But the book of Ecclesiastes tells us, just keep this in mind, that one day you will have to face what you've expressed in the judgment. God just makes it clear, you know, uh, be mindful of what you say, be mindful of what you do, and understand that a day shall come that a judgment can come upon us. Because it says in Matthew, the 12th chapter, and we would do well to consider this because, uh, you know, expression. And all of us have to face this reality. And even if we don't believe it or like it, we're still going to face it. It's kind of like death. You don't like it, but it's coming. Yeah. And so it is that, you know, judgment, judgment is coming. Judgment has come for many and judgment will come ultimately for everyone. But the Bible says in Matthew 12, it says in verse 35, a good man out of the good treasure of the heart bringeth forth good things. And an, <clears throat> and an evil man out of the evil treasure bringeth forth evil things. But I say unto you that every idle word that men shall speak, they shall give account thereof in the day of judgment. For by thy words thou shalt be justified, and by thy words thou shalt be condemned. Hmm. The Bible makes it clear that what we express, there's an accountability. And God wants us to understand that, listen, you may have thoughts, you may have words that you've put together in your mind and get ready to speak. And you certainly may have actions that you want to do. But God says, think 
pause. You have to understand whatever you're about to do is kind of like the story with you and your friends. You know, guys, if we're going to do this, just understand there's an accountability. Yeah. And that is the message that we have to give is to say, listen, God is not in you innately. God is comes into a heart that he finds as a place where he can dwell. Yes. And God does not dwell in filth. He dwells in holiness. And God can only make us holy when we submit unto him. That's when he can transform us or do as David says, create in me a clean heart, renew within me a right, right spirit. Then God does not have a problem making his home in our minds and influencing our thoughts that we begin to speak, do, act, dress, and everything else in the way that he has called us to do. So when you look at these elements of hip hop culture, that's what we have to pay attention to is that breaking, DJing, MCing, all of these different things, the, the, the fashion and all these things, they are expressions that are coming from a culture. The question is, can we put these to the test of God's word? And can these things pass the test that we can say it is all right to do it or are we functioning by this atheistic uh, demigod idea that I somehow innately am God myself and I can make up the decisions and decide what I want to do and express myself as I choose. The Bible says something different. And if we are wise, especially for those of us who profess Christianity, we need to follow what the word of God says. So I think it's pretty clear that expression um, in whatever form it comes is kind of an indicator of what's on the heart. Of That's correct. The heart. And so if you're expressing falsehood consistently, if you're expressing violence, if you're expressing something that's degrading society, whether it's by great or by little, um, and we know that according again to Hosea 4, that the rejection of knowledge, the rejection of the truth, the rejection of the reality as God presents it, it leads to destruction. If you're doing that in any degree on the, on the scale, then it's showing that your heart is corrupt in some way, shape, or form. Mm -hmm. uh, these things are exciting. We're talking about cultural expression. We're going to continue to talk about the various forms of expression that are outlined in hip hop culture, but more importantly, look at the principles that govern genuine, true, uh, pure, holy, lovely, and, and acceptable expression. God is not against expression. God is not against uh, culture, but everything that God identifies as truth and love and purity are the things that dictate to us how we can express ourselves and what is acceptable in the reality that God has outlined. I want to encourage you to uh, join us again for our next episode. And as you remember in Proverbs 2 and verse 6, it is the Lord that gives wisdom and out of his mouth comes knowledge and understanding. God bless you.